So here, uh, we're going to categorize all those techniques in three different uh, group. The first one is super boson model detection. It means when you have labeled data, means in your training data, you have some samples as positive, some samples as negative. And then the only thing that you have to do is a train a model. It can be like all those techniques that you, that you can do in machine learning. It can be any, any models, even a neural network, deep learning models, or some of those uh, like, like a normal or like a before deep learning area, like even SVM model, random forest, or any kind of models that you can just use it for classification. One of the major problem here is uh, usually you need, uh, the thing that you have is super imbalance. You can just apply any technique here because usually the number of positive sample or, or anomaly samples that you have is super small. And that's why when it's super small, then, the, then you can just use all those techniques that you know in machine learning. You should be able to find a model that can handle this data, uh, the data as far that like a, like a, that that is coolness in your in your data. This uh, this topic, uh, we kind of we will we, okay. We won't cover it that much because usually like usually you won't have labeled data, but we will have a section for it at, the, at maybe at the very beginning. It means we will provide you with some uh, with some data. And those data will sometimes will have labels. And we'll use some supervised methods, like it can be just a neural network mod models, to, to kind of try to find those anomaly and give you some performance. And then we'll do semi-supervised and unsupervised one to, to kind of compare these methods and techniques. And, and then we, we, we'll be able to compare. But before continuing, before, okay, okay, before uh, say more about it, let's say that what's semi-supervised and what's unsupervised. Semi-supervised is when all the all the samples you have are normal, and so it means you can be you can be confident about your, about your data that whatever you have in your training data is normal and you don't have any kind of anomaly in it. So the only thing that you have to do is to learn feature pattern from the normal class. Uh, you can say that if you learn pattern feature from, from the normal data, that should be enough that you can say that any, that if you see anything that is not like the thing that you have seen before, it should be at layer. And there are lots of techniques for it. All those one class classification, like one SVM, or density estimation approach, or generative models, or autoencoders. There are, there are lots of techniques that the only thing that they are trying to do is to learn the distribution of your data given that this all the thing that you have is normal. And once you learn the distribution of your data or all those one class classification, the only thing that they are doing is they are trying to find a boundary around your normal data. And then from that moment, they will say, if anything is, is outside of that boundary or if likelihood of that sample is super, super small, then maybe that sample is a layer or is animal. In unsupervised animal detection, you kind of, it is a situation that you, you, you don't know that much about your data. It means your data is not clean. It, all the sample here can be anomaly or not. And that's why you can just learn the distribution of data and be sure that whatever you're learning is actually normal. So that's why they're using different techniques like distance-based method or density-based method. So you do you are not sure about what uh, like what is anomaly or what is not in in your trained data. So one of the as I said one of the weakness of the supervised approach is that they require lots of effort in labeling data, because like then you should be able to have maybe some humans to be able to say that okay that's anomaly that's outlier that's anomaly like in fraud detection there should be lots of people actually finding fraud and labeling data for you. The good thing about semi-supervised and unsupervised one is you don't need that much, uh, that much, that much effort, and so you can just use the data as is. And the other thing is, in supervised one, as I said, you need lots of effort to be able to label them. And there's another problem as well. 
uh, the other problem is like uh, you, sh you won't be able to cover all those anomalies that you might see in the future because out later on anomaly is not the thing that you can actually see it's mostly the thing that you haven't thought about before it's like unseen uh, pattern which might even just happen in the test data so that's why even if you do lots of labeling then your model will be kind of biased toward those uh, label data. As an example, in the workshop, we'll try to kind of uh, have a data set which has lots of anomaly, and then we kind of re we'll remove them from the training data, like, like I don't know, half of them, and then we'll train the model. And then we'll see that if that supervised model will be able to catch those anomalies, which is, which is similar to the, to the one that it will miss them because it hasn't seen them before. And it will be super, uh, like a, super hard for the model to be able to catch them. So that, that's why there are lots of drawbacks for supervised model one. So it means even if you have label, even if you train a model, then you will be biased toward those anomalies that you have seen before and you won't, you won't be able to catch new anomalies. That's why this workshop will be mostly about semi-supervised and unsupervised way of doing animal detection. Uh, so, uh, uh, for the sake of this uh, workshop, I kind of divide all this technique in three, three different methods as well, three different groups as well. First one is a statistical method. It's like, uh, it's like when, when you can just flag the, uh, the data using uh, some statistical models or techniques that you can learn from the data. Uh, it can be just using a, like a standard deviation or it can be just using some, uh, just fitting a Gaussian or it can be based on Instagram, I will, we'll talk about them. The other thing, and we'll try to cover them in the first session. In the first session, it would be mainly about maybe a statistical model and a few classical model. And the thing is, the reason that I said uh, I put it at the first session is because usually you should be able to cover anomaly using just a statistical model if the, the, the source that generating anomaly is not that much complicated. It's like, let's say you're just, you, ju you just have a device sometimes something weird is happening like i don't know temperature going super high or the speed of a mod the, that engine is going high or super low so, so then if you are just dealing with the uh, with maybe stream of data which the the, the maybe the, the nature of the anomaly is not that complex i guess using just some statistical models we should be able to catch it if the nature of that uh, for, uh, for that odd layer or anomaly is a bit more complex. Like, I don't know, sometimes it can be like a fraud or in network intrusion or any kind of application that maybe it needs, it, it, maybe the dimension of, dimension of the data is super, uh, super high or maybe those a statistical model can catch the anomaly. Then that's why in the second session, we'll talk mainly about classical machine learning model. Which, may be, which will be something like IFRS, 1SVM, clustering technique, which there are lots of machine learning models which they are trying to, don't, as I said, don't, the thing that they're trying to do is like find a boundary around, an, around your data, or they are trying to cluster the data, or as 1SVM is, uh, is like, a, as I said, one, one class classification, or for, and, for isolation forest, it will be just to generate a bunch of, uh, isolation tree in your data to be able to kind of capture the anomaly. And the third session, we will try to cover deep learning based approach for it. And the reason that deep learning approach is important here as well is because sometimes the, the data that you're working with is super complex, like, like image, like, or sequential data, or you have some hierarchical pattern in your data, and the only way that you can catch a fraud is using deep learning models. 
it's like in healthcare, we have a person, a per, each person has lots of claim, like, like if, like, but is his, okay, if he's, if he's visiting a hospital or if he's visiting a doctor, and each of those claim has lots of uh, information as well, like demographic information or information about the, the procedure or diagnosis or medication that is taken. So it's like maybe it's like a hierarchical information that you can get for a person. And the thing that you should say is like, if something weird is happening, and to be able to kind of capture all those complex patterns in the data, you will need a deep learning technique. Uh, so even for the deep learning technique, uh, there are like different ways that you can do that. Is like, we will try autoregressive model, which will try to learn the distribution of the data. Uh, like, like for image can be pixel CNN for text, it can be just all those language modeling technique, which the only thing that they're they trying to do is to predict the next word. And so you can have a probability of a sentence. And if a probability is super low, you can say maybe something wrong with that sentence. So then you can say maybe that sentence or that sequence is, is, is like, is, is anomaly. So that's why the model can actually produce a good probability for it. In autoencoder part, so you will try to reproduce it. So the only thing that the model should do is to learn the distribution of the data so it can kind of reproduce it uh, at, uh, as output. And if you can do that, then you can say maybe something is wrong about the data. Or even GANs, which will be all those generative models, which is something new. Uh, is like I would say that maybe there are a frontier of the animal detection right now. A lot of techniques and it's coming up every day which means they try to catch uh, fraud in, in different way. So yes, and that's why we kind of have to kind of have a deep learning model uh, to be able to capture, as I said, to capture a, a more complex data and to be able to have maybe a better technique if you have more complex anomaly. So, one of the reasons, as I said, for deep learning is if data is super complex. The other reason can be if the one or the source of the fake or fraud or anomaly is some is something smart. Like for a, for a device generating a signal, maybe fraud can be complex or not, or I mean anomaly can be complex or not. But for for claim insurance for bank. Usually, the, all those people trying to make sure that the thing that they're generating, that fake maybe claim, is super similar to the normal one. That's why then you need more complex technique to be able to tell the difference, what is normal, what is not. That's why you will need a more sophisticated model. So those deep learning one. Uh, it can be, as I said, different, different. It, it, there are like a different way that you can kind of do that, uh, which we'll try to cover them in the third session. Uh, one of them is like a deep neural network using like a deep deep neural network. Uh, the other one is like those deep generative model, which the thing that they are trying to do is to learn the distribution of the data. So basically, they are trying to be able to learn the distribution of data that they can maybe generate a new sample of it. And one of those, uh, like uh, one of, some of the like a uh, famous one would be a variational autoencoder, adversarial autoencoder, and GANs. And all those model, model, as I said, trying to learn the distribution of the data. Like even for GANs, it, maybe it's not trying to learn the exact distribution, but it will try to be able to generate a new sample as a generator. So, so that it is super similar to the normal one. And if you, if you look at it, the only job that discriminator is doing is to be able to tell the difference, what is, norm, what is real, what is not. And maybe if you can have a, have a good discriminator, that discriminator can be kind of like a anomaly detection for you, which can tell a difference between real and not real, what is fraud, what is not. And autoencoder, which the idea is to learn the predict uh, to to learn to reproduce your input, and if you if the model can do that, and then then you can say the model has learned the data, so it can kind of compress it, and then you can you can decompress it, and then then you can say the model has learned the distribution of the data, 
And if you can't reconstruct a new sample, you can say maybe it's fraud. And for self-supervised one, which is a super interesting topic nowadays, is a self-supervised one. It means uh, the thing that you want to learn to predict some part of your data. It is also universal like autoencoder, but the thing is choosing what to predict can be super hard and you need kind of like a domain expert in that field. It can be like for claim or for any, it can be the cost of that claim. So it means instead of trying to uh, find a boundary around the data or learn the distribution of the data, you can just say, okay, I have maybe a, 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 a sample and I want to, to be able to predict a part of it. Like if for the claim, given the claim, I want to be able to predict the cost of it or length of a stay of it. Or for, for the network, you want to predict maybe, uh, maybe a, a part of it. So it means then you can kind of convert your anomaly detection task to like a prediction task. And the idea is if the model can give you good number, good result, and if you have a new sample that uh, the, that uh, the the prediction is super off, whatever the model is predicting is not similar to the thing that you can see from the data from that sample. Maybe there is something off with that sample. So we'll try to cover that one in the third session as well.